Opening doors in the world of entertainment is something black actors and actresses are no stranger to. With the lack of roles often tailored just for them, the pursuit of top projects and becoming a known figure in the industry is a really tough task. One shining example of such a pioneer breaking the mold in the acting world came in the form of Rachel True. Rachel True's career as an actress began in 1991 and has only grown from there. Coming from a mixed race New York City home, the actress would work tirelessly from humble beginnings and fight to audition, which led to doors being opened for more comedic black actresses. True lived the life that was quite private, away from the big screen, revealing little about herself unless she's promoting a film or a television show. With the commendable list of roles ranging from horror to comedy, the actress is perhaps best known as Mona in the UPN sitcom Half and Half, as well as the love interest of Dave Chappelle in the cult comedy Half Baked. Throughout her years on Half and Half, True held her own on the UPN comedy night lineup, along with the women of Girlfriends and the cast of One on One and All of Us. She showcased her comedic timing, sharing the screen with several comedy veterans with memorable performances week in and week out. This is why Rachel True will always be unforgotten. Born November 15, 1966, Rachel True has worked tirelessly from being a middle child minority parents in order to find her calling. Upon completing primary school, True would enroll at New York University, building up a love for acting and a spiritual identity that would later serve her in life. An appearance on The Cosby Show in 1991 proved to be a small yet iconic cameo, beginning journey into more popular black projects and the industry as a whole. While filming a pilot with a young Raven Simone, True met Chris Rock and an accent to bigger roles continued with yet another star co-signing her brilliance. I was walking around with Little Raven and Mal, co-star, and Chris Rock had come by for some reason because he worked on SNL then and that's how we met he came and saw a play i was doing at the time and was like oh i have this movie that i'm doing maybe you want to audition and the casting was here in la not new york i ended up flying out here to audition for it that was the part that moved me from new york to la following her feature in chris rock cb4 in 1993 true appeared in 1996's the craft According to True, the role was one she never thought she'd get because she was told she was too old by agents to even audition. True was only 28 years old by the time filming began, but after winning over producers, her role of Rochelle Zimmerman had to be rewritten because it was originally intended for a right actress. On set, True explained that she felt marginalization among her white co-stars. She also spoke on the time where she had to fight for equal attention during the publicity tour in 1996. During an October 2020 sit down with Yahoo Entertainment, True reflected on the process stating, they put up a poster of the four of us, mentioned the three girls, and then skipped down the call sheet, I think. This is how black actors get underpaid. This is how they are forgotten. And it's a part of why I mouth off about the publicity back in the day that I was excluded from. At the time, I don't think my castmates understood. They were like, you're not as famous as us. What they didn't get is that in the early to mid 1990s, the studios excluded the black person, which meant they were never going to be as famous as you because they didn't get the press. The problems True faced continue in even as recently as 2019 when a craft reunion was reported to be in the works without True present. When True found out she was going to be excluded, she spoke up, which eventually caused a convention holding the reunion to invite her. Relocating to Los Angeles allowed for True to continue bumping elbows with other rising black stars such as Dave Chappelle. This led to her playing his love interest in the 1998 stoner cult classic half baked. At the time, Dave was a budding comedian on the rise and her quirky nature paired well with his on screen. The irony of her portraying Mary Jane Potman, who is anti-drugs, being yet another one of her more notable films to the point that it would garner a sequel over 20 years later. Cameos poured in for television during the 90s for True as she made appearances on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, family members, and Beverly Hills 90210. 
Following an appearance on Dawson's Creek in 2001, True would get her most known role in 2002 as Mona Thorne in Half and Half. An interview via the Huffington Post shed light onto how True felt her legacy was laid through the show saying, I think there's a whole set of alternative black girls who were so grateful that there was a Denise Huxtable on television so we can say, oh wow, that's sort of like me, but different, but like me. It was a very silly family friendly show and I was really lucky to have Telma Hopkins play my mom. She's a great comedic actress. She was very generous to me and by generous I mean, I was very new to sitcom acting. She's done a ton of them and she'd help me out help me figure out jokes because there are some actors who are selfish and they don't want you to get a laugh and they want to get all the laughs and she could have easily gone out of her way to make my life horrible but she's not that person at all the series that saw true playing half sisters with essence atkins was a hit notable being one of the top five shows on the network even up until it was abruptly canceled in 2006 after UPN merged with the WB to form the CW. The show was one of many that was not brought back. In that same interview, True commented on the ending of the series. It was off that they ended up canceling my show and a few other shows that were better in the ratings than some of the white shows that they kept on. They own the network and they're building the brand and it's certainly their right to put out whatever they want. I think it's sort of sad. First of all, let me just say, when I first got the show, I thought it was weird that all the black shows were segregated to one night, like Monday night was black night. And you have a whole row of black shows and the rest of Tuesday through Friday were non-black shows. Further in the interview, True would reveal shows she's a fan of that have led her to continue to push for more diverse roles for black people in an industry that respects the range regardless of age. After the cancellation of Half and Half, True would appear in a handful of TV movies while at the same time practicing her passions of tarot reading to upscale Los Angeles clients. Exploring her other talents, True decided that she would release a book based on her tarot experience titled True Heart Intuitive Tarot in 2020, along with a deck of over 70 cards allowing for users to gauge their own paths and seek out answers properly, even at home. Through an interview with Shonda Land, True detailed how to use her book and debunked the idea that the cards themselves are magical or capable of predicting the future. She reveals as much saying, the cards themselves are not magic. They are pieces of printed cardboard. The magic comes in what they stare in your own visceral subconscious, how they unlock your intuition. It's helped me with my career in Hollywood, a town full of smoke and mirrors. Having been practicing tarot reading since she was eight, True described it as giving a piece of herself to the world through helping them learn more about themselves taking into account the many times the actress used the cards to guide her to better understanding. True asserts that fans should explore every card and use her silly antidotes to inspire themselves. In recent years, True has made guest appearances in Being Mary Jane and Family Reunion. Her appearance on the latter show would mark the first time True was reunited with her former sitcom mother, Telma Hopkins, since their time together on Half and Half. In addition to these series, True has a reoccurring role in the Amazon Prime original series, Harlem. The legacy for black girls to be carefree, comfortable with their quirkiness and unapologetic is something Rachel True continues to represent as well. Despite her living a more private life, revealing little about family on social media, through her scattered podcast appearances or quick words at a convention, True has shown that she is a true actress in every sense of the word dedicated to helping others be the best version of themselves. And the chameleon that broke boundaries in the film industry and stayed true to herself, making it impossible for her to be unforgotten.